Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question, best time to buy and sell stock. All right. So compared to all the other uh, buy and sell stock questions, this one's a lot easier. All right. So say you're given an array for which the ith element is the price of the given stock on day i, if you were only permitted to complete at most one transaction. So you can only make one transaction or no transactions. Buy one and sell one share of the stock. Design an algorithm to find the maximum profit that is possible. Note that you cannot sell a stock before you buy one, obviously. So you must buy a stock first and then you have to sell that. All right. So now that we have this, uh, let's just take a quick look at this example over here. Uh, 715364. And what does that mean? So this means that on day one, we have a price of seven. On day two, we have a price of one, so on and so forth. And the best price over here is obtained when we buy on day two. So when we buy for a price of one and we sell for a price of six. So what is the profit? So we sold for six, bought for one. Six minus one is equal to five. And that is going to be the maximum possible profit given that we can only buy one time. And that's what we're going to end up outputting. We end up outputting the value five. Over here, we do not actually have anything. So seven, six, four, three, one. It's in descending order. And no matter when you buy, you're going to end up with a loss. So it's better to not buy at all and end up with a profit of zero. Okay, so those are our two uh, cases. And now let's see how we can actually solve this using code. And to do that, let's actually just go by this step by step. And yeah, so this is the exact same question as the example we looked at, 715364. And these are all of the prices. And over here, we're going to have two variables. So we're going to have a variable called minimum value so far. And why is this uh, variable important? So you want to preferably buy when our value or the price is the cheapest, right? When we get the best price. So what are we looking for here? We're looking for the minimum over here, like we said over here, right? So we want the minimum price possible. And for the max profit, we want the highest profit possible. You want to be able to make the most money and you get a maximum profit when the price that you sell for is a lot higher than the price that you buy for. All right, that being said, let's just go through the step by step. And this is going to be, uh, and we're just going to have to iterate through the prices one time. Okay, so what are we going to do? So first, we need to define these variables beforehand. So what value do we give to our maximum profit? So on day zero, we did not do anything. So what is our profit? Nothing, right? So we have a profit of zero. We didn't make any money. We didn't lose any money. Cool. And what is the minimum value so far going to be? So we don't really have any value for that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to give it a really big uh, positive number. And the purpose of this is so that it gets uh, replaced by whatever number we have in prices. So we're just going to start off with a value of positive, uh, positive infinity. Okay, so there we have positive infinity. And those are the values we're going to start off with. Okay, so how is this going to work? So we're going to start off iterating through it one by one. So we have seven. So we're going to put seven here. And we're going to compare the two ones, uh, two values with each other. So what is bigger, seven or infinity? Obviously seven. And what do we want to choose? We want to choose the minimum value. So we're going to end up choosing the value seven. So now this variable has a value of seven. So if we were to sell on the current price right now, what is the profit that we make? And the, pro the answer to that is seven minus seven, which is zero. And in that case, nothing changes, right? We still stay at the same maximum profit since seven minus seven is the same as zero. Okay. Now let's go to one over here. And what are we going to end up choosing? One or seven? One is smaller. So we're going to end up choosing one. So we have one over here. And what is the profit going to be given that we sell on this day? One minus one is well zero. And they're still equal to the same. So the max profit stays the same, right? So now we go on to five. So now we're choosing between five and one. Which one is bigger? And five is bigger, but we want the smaller value. So we're going to stick with one. So we do not take five. Instead, we stick with the value of one. So now we, our minimum value so far is going to be one. And what is the maximum profit going to be? So in this case, we are going to be selling on this day over here, which is has which has a price of five. So what is five minus one? So five minus one has a value of four. So over here, we get four and that is going to be our new profit. So which one do we choose? Do we choose zero or four? Obviously, we're going to end up choosing four since four is bigger. So now we have four over here and one over here. 
Okay, so now we go to three, and then uh, obviously one is less than three, so we stick with one over here. And if we sold on this day, we would have three minus one, which is two, and obviously four is still bigger, so we stick with four again. So we stick with the same values. Now we have six. So we go to six over here. Six is again bigger than one, so we stay with one. And for our maximum profit, if we were to sell on this day, it would be six minus one, which gives us a value of five. And well, five is bigger than four. So we're going to change the value from 4 to 5. So now we end up choosing the value 5, and that's what we have. So we have 5 as our maximum profit so far. And finally, we have the number, the last number 4. Well, 4 is less than, uh, greater than 1, so we're just going to ignore that. Stick with 1 over here. And uh, one minus, uh, 4 minus 1 gives us a profit of 3. And well, 3 is less than 5. So we have our maximum profit as 5, which is what we're going to end up returning. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. I think it's pretty easy to understand. And now we're going to code it out and see how that looks like. All right, so let's start off by defining our values. So what are the two values that we need to define? So over here, we're going to have our max profit, which is going to start off with a value of zero. And we're also going to have our minimum price. So this is going to be the minimum price so far, which starts off at a value of positive infinity. And you can do that by doing float in. So that gives us a value of positive infinity. All right, so now we're going to iterate through all of our prices. So to do that, I'll just do for price and prices. So now we have each of the prices, and now we want to find the minimum price so far. And we have that in the variable min underscore price. And over here, we're going to choose the minimum between whatever the current minimum price is or the current price we're on for the certain day. So uh, what do I mean by that? So minimum price over here, uh, we're going to start off with the value of positive infinity and each time that's going to change and the price over here uh, corresponds to our current price of the certain day that we are on which we get from our for loop okay so using that we get the minimum price that we're talking about and over here we're going to calculate our profit so the profit that we have so far is going to be so so this is the profit considering that we sell it right now. And if we were to do that, it's going to be whatever the current price is, so the price that we are currently on, subtracted by our minimum price. So that's going to give us the current profit. And now we want to see what is going to be the max profit over here. So is the maximum profit going to be the old maximum profit? So we're going to compare the old maximum profit, which is max underscore profit, or is it the new profit that we just calculated, which we have by profit? So we're going to take the maximum between those two and change the variable as such. And just to save up memory, instead of storing uh, this value inside of another variable, we can just directly call it over here. Okay, so we have that, and that should be it. So at the ending of this, we should have the maximum profit stored in our variable, and we're just going to end up returning max underscore profit. So over here, we return that, and our solution is accepted. And finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions. And don't forget to like and subscribe if the video helped you. Thank you.